All right, so taking a little break from my typical adventure content on two wheels and on two feet, I'm coming to you tonight with a little science geek out. Now I know I've talked about this on the channel before, but if you need a refresher or if you're just new here, by training, I'm a research scientist. And my area of research expertise has to do with what's called the cryosphere. And that's just a fancy way of saying I'm interested in really cold places. Now, if you want to drill down even deeper, my even more specific area of expertise is in glaciology or the study of ice flow and deformation. Now, with that said, over the last 15 years of my life, all through graduate school and in the years following, I've spent nine field seasons working down in Antarctica, eight on the continent and one on a ship offshore. And in all cases, I was there for a specific research project. Now, typically my work revolves around ice coring projects. And you might be thinking, wait, I thought you said you were interested in ice flow and deformation. Aren't ice cores used to reconstruct past climates and look at atmospheric concentrations and such? And the answer is yes, they are, but you can also look at ice cores to do paleo reconstructions of ice deformation. And that's where my research comes in. Now, when I talk to people about what I do, it can get pretty complicated. So what I like to tell people that I do in very simple terms is, I study the geology of ice. So when you think about a geologist, someone going out into the field studying rock deformation or faults or folds, or kind of classical geology, those are the same things I basically study in ice. I look for evidence that ice has been sheared or that there are folds in the ice or there's deformation in the ice. And one of the ways that you can do that really well is by taking samples from ice cores and studying them. I promise I'm getting to the elephant in the room here in just a second. So two quick things that are worth noting. I have spent over 14 months of my life in Antarctica, so over a year of my life. And I've also spent over a year and a half of my life standing in a cold freezer outside of Denver studying ice cores over the last 15 years. Now, of course, all of this discussion ignores the fact that before any of this, I was a working professional engineer before I decided to go back to school and change careers. So going back to the ice cores for a second, when I examine the physical properties of these ice core samples, there are typically three types of data sets that I'm most interested in collecting. One is called the ice fabric. Now that sounds kind of weird, but it's really just a fancy way of saying, I'm interested in looking at how all of the individual ice crystals in a piece of ice are oriented because as ice flows and it's pushed and sheared and deformed, ice crystals will orient in different ways. And it remembers that orientation. So if you can look at the orientation of different crystals, you can back out how the ice was deformed in the past. Now the second most common type of analysis I do is what's called grain statistics analysis. And really that's just a fancy way of saying those same ice crystals that make up the bulk piece of ice, I'm just interested in how big they are, how they're shaped, how they're oriented, all of that can tell me something about what the ice has gone through in the past. And the third type of analysis I do, and this is the one that I've probably spent the most amount of time on, is I look at bubble sections. So I look at sections of ice under a scope and look at all of the tiny little air bubbles inside the ice to try and learn something about the ice deformation. Now you're probably thinking, I remember seeing a documentary about that. People take samples of ice, they put them in a vacuum chamber, they melt the ice to extract the air out of those air bubbles, and then they can reconstruct what the past CO2 concentration was or the past methane concentration in the atmosphere. That's not what I'm doing. I'm actually looking at the physical characteristics of those bubbles, how elongated they are, how round they are, how big they are, how close they are to the other bubbles in that sample. All of those things can also tell me the physical history of the ice. So where am I going with all of this? Well, back in May, I posted a video after I got back from the ice lab with my grad student. And while we were there, we prepared a lot of what are called thin sections. Now, thin sections are also prepared in geology, but in the ice world, what we do is we take a small piece of ice from an ice core, we put it in a special machine called a microtome that has a very sharp blade on it, and we basically shave that piece of ice down to less than a millimeter. So it's super, super thin. Now, when you take that thin section and you put it on a special light stage and you look at it through polarized filters, 
what happens is all of the individual ice crystals become visible in different colors. And all of the different colors represent the different orientations of those crystals. So it's a really cool way of being able to visualize all of the orientations of the crystals. Then we can take that same thin section, put it into a special machine that will go through and measure each one of those crystals to figure out which way it's oriented, and you've got a whole suite of data to analyze. So, when I was at the ice lab, I noticed something that I'd never seen before. As I was walking down one of the main hallways, I noticed beautiful imagery of thin sections that were framed and had small captions next to them. Somebody, an artist of some kind, had come into the lab, taken many of the images that we've processed over the years, and framed them for the lab. And as I'm walking down this hallway looking at these samples, I'm thinking to myself, hey, wait a minute, I did that image. Hey, wait a minute, I did that image. Wait, that's my sample. And I started thinking like, what's going on here? Somebody framed up all of my, my scientific data, essentially. Now, to be fair, this was not done like surreptitiously uh, or with ill intent. Uh, all of these pictures were framed specifically for the lab itself just to be used as demonstration pieces. And I think that's really awesome. And for me to see my imagery up on the wall was pretty satisfying, especially considering that it really does sort of cross that line between science and art. And I think that this particular photographer uh, and artist did a really wonderful job at sort of picking out some of the best imagery in all of these ice core data sets that we have. So now we get to the main point of this video. I've been in contact with this particular artist for several weeks inquiring about his particular framed prints. And I told him that I'd be very interested in having one of my own for my office at work. Now we went back and forth for a bit and talked about which project uh, was most sentimental to me, which image I had a particular attachment to, and we finally settled on a thin section that I worked on from the South Pole Ice Core Project. This particular sample I just thought was really beautiful, and given the way that this particular artist is able to sort of frame these prints and really give them sort of that mix of science meets art, uh, I asked if he'd be willing to frame this particular image. And he actually signed an agreement with me that stated he would never frame another print of this particular image again, and this would be the only one ever in circulation. Now, obviously, I have copies of this image because they're in my data sets, uh, but a framed version that has been mounted and prepared and with special sort of filters and image processing on it to make it look as perfect as possible has never been done and will never be done again. So behind me is my special ordered, custom-made, sentimental, mounted print of a thin section image from South Pole. And I'm about to open it and do an unboxing and I'm really excited to see what it looks like. So let's do it. All right, here we go. Very exciting. It's like he gave me a custom uh, note as well. Here we go. Oh man, this is incredible. Wow. Look at that. That is amazing. This frame is one solid piece of powder coated metal. I forget if it's aluminum, but it's an incredibly expensive frame. Okay, so here's the statistics. South Pole, 5,777 years before present. Depth of 460 meters, so I was a little bit off. Captured this image on April 30th of 2018. Print one of one. How about that? So, what are you looking at in this picture? Again, this is a thin section of ice pulled up from South Pole Station. And each one of these little colored polygons in this image is a separate crystal of ice, all smushed together to form solid ice. Now, if you take an ice cube out of your freezer and you shave it down and you look at it through polarized light, it's not going to look like this. The reason that 
ice sheet ice looks like this is because it's developed from snow that fell on the surface and was sort of compressed and centered together to make bulk ice. And so you can also see if you look very closely, all these tiny little dots, those are all the air bubbles trapped in the ice. So it's a beautiful image. And again, the color of the crystals simply represents that specific crystal's orientation in space. So, you know, all of the orange ones are sort of oriented similar. All of the black ones are oriented slightly differently. And so that's all that's telling you. And then we can run this image through a machine that shines a light through each individual crystal and can calculate what that axis of the crystal is. And that axis is called the C-axis. And when you measure it for an entire sample and you measure the bulk of C-axes, that's what's called the ice fabric, as I was talking about earlier. So anyway, blah, 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 science jargon. This is absolutely beautiful and I love it. So that's gonna do it for this video. I was really excited to share this unboxing with you. I've never seen this before. So this is very exciting. I mean, this frame is beautiful. Everything about this is just fantastic and I can't wait to hang this in my office. And uh, it's, just, it's just lovely. It's absolutely lovely. So I, am, I spoiled myself. I spent a decent amount of money on this image. Um, but you know, I think it's, I think it's worth it. And it really makes me proud of the work that I've done over these last 15 years. So anyway, thanks everyone for sticking around to the end and I promise more adventure content coming soon. So take care, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.